Hey, this is Brent Salisbury, a blog at networkstatic.net. Today we're going to go over OpenFlow Normal and how to drain uh, SDN traffic into the native network after you've peeled off interesting traffic to do something with it. So here's our topology for the lab. We've got two HP switches, uh, two hosts hanging off of those, and then two links in between. Uh, since we are using Normal, there will be some flooding and learning happening on these two links so that means we have spanning tree there so we will be blocking a link. Uh, that's probably one of the downsides of normal forwarding since uh, with OpenFlow you can establish all of your flows and say exactly what you want uh, forwarding so you don't really have to worry about uh, loops because theoretically loops should be con managed in the controller. Uh, so our topology is one host here uh, on the left side and one host on the right side and we're going to proactively install uh, OpenFlow normal rules so that these two can reach each other. Here's what the flow table will look like. So we've set up, uh, we'll be setting up a wildcard match for all fields in the, in the L2, L3, and L1 headers. Uh, or L1 is merely the ingress port. Uh, L2, source desk, Mac, VLAN, I don't have all of them listed here. Uh, and then we'll be setting a priority of zero. Uh, so what zero, what this is, is a table miss. So a table miss is when there are no matches on your flow tables on the switch. Uh, this is basically a default route for uh, traditional routing. So if nothing, nothing matches, everything is going to hit this rule. And then our action or instruction is going to be normal. So what normal says is come out of the open flow pipeline and get pushed back into the normal L2, L3 pipeline, which is typically made up of CAM. Uh, that's going to be a binary lookup on L2 and L3 tables. Uh, so why we're just taking a switch and turning it into a normal switch? Well, the important thing is, is we can start leveraging existing gear and start to incrementally integrate in OpenFlow into networks. So if you look at the first three rules here, this is explicit traffic. So and then at the end here, we've got a default drain out. So the, the important thing here is we can proactively install interesting uh, traffic, forwarding, custom forwarding, security, uh, tapping, whatever you want to do with your flow tables, and then not have to worry about the semantics of the rest. We just want to say, well, after we've done something for our custom application, let's just drain everything into the normal forwarding pipeline. Uh, so to do this, we're going to use uh, Floodlight, the OpenFlow, uh, controller that was open source from Big Switch. It's based off David Erickson's work at Stanford. Uh, that controller's name was Beacon. Uh, we're going to use curl, use their northbound API, which is a REST-based API. So let's get started. So to start with, we're going to install these dependencies. Uh, Java, Ant. I'm going to fast forward here so that you don't have to watch my slow DSL. Uh, we're also going to use git, which is uh, so we're going to clone the uh, GitHub the GitHub repository for Floodlight. Okay, now that we have that installed, uh, let's go ahead and clone out of the GitHub Floodlight repository. Uh, what this is going to do is going to copy a mirror of that directory down. Uh, once we have that installed, or once we have it downloaded. We're going to then modify Floodlight so that it's not being reactive, and it's only going to forward, uh, it's only going to uh, push static flow entries into uh, our forwarding elements. And the advantage of uh, doing it proactively is there's no setup time uh, between no uh, packet in re uh, punts to the controller. Okay, now that's downloaded. CD into the directory. Uh, we're going to edit uh, the properties file of Floodlight, and we're going to take out the forwarding uh, entry there. Let's see. There it is. Let's remove this. And let's save it. Next, we're going to build uh, the 
get a jar file using ant. So just from the source directory, type ant. It'll build. Uh, keep in mind this is all being done on uh, a VM on a laptop. Okay. Now that we've got it built, let's start Java. Uh, start floodlight. Okay, so the build was put into target. So we're going to find that jar file that was pushed into the target directory, that was built into the target directory. So java-jar target floodlight jar. Now that's going to start up uh, floodlight. We'll give it a second. Okay, now that we've got it built, started, we're going to go to the web page. I've got a nice little GUI for it. Uh, the URL is in the post. Uh, so this is the DPID, data path ID, 64-bit. Uh, uh, so it's a MAC address plus a unique identifier uh, defined in the spec. Notice we don't have any flows yet. Uh, didn't install curl, so let me get that installed. So now once we have this, we're going to use uh, the curl command to use the northbound API to instantiate a normal flow. Uh, so once we've done that, uh, let's go back, refresh, and now we see the action there. Uh, so we've got a 200 priority. We'll actually change that to zero on the next. I just want everybody to see the GUI here real quick. Uh, so two switches. And here's the other DPID. Uh, it's also got the action instantiated. And as you can see, it doesn't quite uh, flood light and the pro curve switch are not exactly seeing eye to eye on what normal should be outputting. Not new. So let's go to, from now on, we'll do the CLI. So what those two uh, curl commands were is clearing. So on the HP switch, notice we don't have any flows yet. Uh, so that means anything coming in, since we've set it to only be proactive, anything uh, coming to the switch has a default table miss of drop. So we're going to add in uh, a table miss policy for it to forward to the normal forwarding pipeline. So now let's look at our switch. And now we've got uh, our proper table miss in. So by table miss, everything's wild carded. Uh, you got an idle timeout uh, that's set to zero. Uh, there's also the hard timeout that's also set to zero. So this means this will never expire. Uh, the only things that can remove it is if the switch was to reboot or uh, if the controller pulled it out. So in that window, we've got pings going. So let's pull out. This is going to clear those static entries. Uh, we'll do that from the port. Now we've cleared out all our flows. There's none there since the default, since the policy is to drop because it's proactive. Notice we start timing out. So let's add them back in. And I just paste it into the switch window. That's not going to work. Put it into there. Notice it's 127.00 since we're on the controller. Uh, let's find the flows that are instantiated. Uh, now both switches have the flow back in and traffic's going again. So again, the only thing that can remove those is if the switch were to reboot or the controller told it to uh, remove those flows with the flow mod saying delete. So we're going to run iperf next. So uh, we're going to just see, let's take a look at what the bandwidth is. So these are 100 meg ports, so theoretical max of you know 90 to 95 meg. This is just uh, iperf, this is for Windows, because the two lab boxes are on Windows. So notice uh, we did 113 megabytes, and we've, we're doing 94 megabits per second. So uh, this is going a wire because it's matching everything in TKM. So just to review what we've done, we have uh, installed a default table miss policy of OpenFlow Normal. So we've taken this rule, we've said anything with a priority of zero, so the lowest priority gets the last match. So any of your interesting traffic would be have a higher priority and match before. Uh, and anything that matches, that doesn't get matched by something else, is going to drain into OpenFlow normal. Thanks again. And 
You can find me on the Twitters at Network Static. Uh, I blog at NetworkStatic.net and occasionally blog on PacketPushers.net. Uh, swing by the PacketPushers forum and the community needs all the input it can get. Thanks. <laughs>